In the last video for this week, I want to do a special example of the method of Frobenius to solve a very important differential equation, Bessel's equation. The result will be the Bessel functions, which are non-elementary functions which frequently show up in various physics problems. They're a pretty important class of functions, and I'm pleased to get to introduce them to you. First, I need another definition, the gamma function. This is another non-elementary function that shows up all over the place and I'm going to use it later in the video. It is defined by an integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t minus 1 times e to the negative x. And be careful here, t is the variable of the gamma function, even though x is the variable of the integral. The exponential decay ensures that this integral will converge regardless of t, but the larger t is, the larger the power of x is, which means that there's more area under the curve, so I expect the gamma function to be an increasing function in t. The gamma function is very useful for its particular properties. These can all be proved from the integral definition, but I'm not going to do those proofs in this video. The first identity says that gamma of a plus 1 is equal to a times gamma of a. If you combine this with the fact of gamma 1 is 1, this gives a surprising result. For natural numbers, gamma of n is just n minus 1 factorial. The first property gives this. To get to n, I just add 1 n many times, and each time I multiply by the previous number in the gamma function. This is exactly building the factorial. Since it starts at 1 instead of 0, this builds n minus 1 factorial. So the gamma function is the function that extends the factorial. The factorial isn't defined for non-integers, but the gamma function fills it in between the integers to make the factorial a continuous function which is very cool. Well, what exactly does it fill it in with? The other values of gamma also turn out to be pretty interesting. In particular, gamma of 1 half is the square root of pi, which is very strange and quite surprising. And from this, I can calculate the other half integer values of gamma. They're just multiples of the square root of pi by using the first property starting with 1 half. So this is the gamma function. Again, it shows up in many places in mathematics and has many applications. But for us, it will just be a way to deal with the coefficients in the series solution that I'm going to do shortly. So here is the Bessel equation. Again, this shows up in several problems. It shows up in harmonic motions for a circular medium, say like the surface of a drum. It also shows up in springs with fatigue, so springs that get weaker over time. And it also shows up in places like quantum mechanics in the model of the hydrogen atom. And that's just, that's not, um, <laughs> sorry, that's not covering everything. It shows up in a variety of other places as well. It's an important equation with important solutions. There is a parameter in this equation, which is conventionally, conventionally written with the Greek letter nu. Unfortunately, nu looks a lot like the Roman letter v, but this is not v, this is nu. Sorry, as always, for the confusing notation. The parameter nu can be any real number. If I divide through by t squared, I get the standard form, and from that, p is 1 over t, and q is 1 minus nu squared over t squared. This means that p minus 1 is 1, and q minus 2 is negative nu squared. And I can put these in the indicial equation, which simplifies nicely down to r squared equals nu squared, so the roots are plus and minus nu. I'll start with a positive root. Assuming that nu is pos a positive number, which I can do without issue since the roots are plus or minus nu then this is the series I need to work with, and here are its first two derivatives. Then I need to work through the algebra of manipulating this series, which is honestly a pretty long calculation. I'll go through it pretty quickly in the video, but there are a lot of details here in the algebra. The fact that nu is a parameter all through makes the algebra a bit harder to follow as well. Here again is the DE. I put in the series and the derivatives into the DE. I split up the difference in the last two terms to make two series. Then I need to bring the powers of t into the series, which I do for the first three series, adding 2 or 1 to the exponent as I need to. After this, I, I shift only the third series to make all the exponents n plus nu, since all the other three series already have the right exponent. Well, then I have matched the powers of t, but not matched the starting bounds. I need to pull out a whole six terms here, 
two from each of the three series that start at n equals zero, so that everything will start at n equals two. So here are those six terms, two from the first series, two from the second series, and two from the fourth series. This lets me combine the series into one. After combining the four series, this is the expression I get, and this is what I'll work with to get the recurrence relation. Note that I have to work with the pulled out terms first. Three of these have t to the nu, and three of these have t to the nu plus one. The coefficients of t to the nu are this, which I can simplify quite nicely. Everything except for c0 cancels, and I just get 0 equals 0, and that tells me that c0 can be anything, so it remains the arbitrary choice to start the recurrence relation. The coefficient of t to the nu plus 1 is this. I simplify this and conclude that c1 must be 0 unless nu equals negative 1 half. This negative 1 half case is a very special case, which leads to some particular versions of the Bessel functions. I'll mention those special cases a bit later, but now I'll just work with c1 equals 0 as the general case. Then this is the general term for the coefficients. I solve for cn to get the recurrence relation. Lots of nice cancel cancellation happens here, which is good, and I get this recurrence relation. I will shift it again as is convention to have cn on the right. And now I need to work with this relation to calculate the coefficients of the series. As I said already, c0 is arbitrary and c1 is 0. Since the relation is second order, and every term is a multiple of two previous, this means that all the odd terms will be 0. So I'll proceed with the even terms. Here are the first few. I have an alternating sign in the numerator, which I write with a power of negative 1. And I can pull 2 out of all these terms in the denominator. There are exactly two n terms matching the index. c2 is two terms, c4 is four terms, and so on. So if I pull 2 out of all of them, I get 2 to the 2n. Then the first half of this product, after pulling out the 2s, is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and so on. So it is building a factorial. The other half is building something like a factorial, but it starts with 1 plus nu, and then add one, adds 1 to each term afterwards in the product. This is where I can use the gamma function. I'm going to use a special choice for c0, 1 over 2 to the nu times gamma of 1 plus nu. Then the general form is this. I can add the powers of 2, I can keep the factorial, but then I can use the properties of the gamma function. This whole product becomes gamma of 1 plus n plus nu. And this is because it is building a factorial-like thing, and gamma captures that behavior for non-integers. Altogether, I get this series, with gamma again helping me write this more succinctly without having to write a dot 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 expression in it. If I had started with a negative um, nu as well, almost all of this would have worked out, given this series. And these are the two linearly independent solutions for most values of nu. These are called the Bessel functions of the first kind. There are a bunch of subtleties about the Bessel functions, which I'm not going to talk about, but which I do cover in the notes. The special case of nu equals 1 half or negative 1 half comes up there. A slightly different approach is needed for that special case. There are also special linear combinations of the two positive and negative cases that produce another set of Bessel functions, called the Bessel functions of the second kind. Finally, in the notes, I cover some of the properties of the Bessel functions, which is worth reading because it is a very interesting set of functions rich in curious properties. For now, though, let me just show you these functions. These are the graphs of the first few positive integer Bessel functions, so nu equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, of the first kind. These are damped oscillations, but they decay much more slowly than the exponential damping that we saw in the previous chapter. As damped oscillations, though, they do nicely measure harmonic systems, such as the amplitude radiating out from the center of a circle. I mentioned a drumhead before, but another really nice example is dropping a small stone in a pool of water. The waves radiate outward in circles. The amplitude of those rays, waves radiating outward, as depending on the radius, can be nicely modeled by a Bessel function. So the next time you see circles rippling in water, think of the Bessel functions. I mentioned Bessel functions of the second kind as well. Here are those graphs. They have the same kind of behavior with damped oscillations. The difference is an asymptote at x equals 0. 
There are situations like gravitational potentials where near the center of the situation should have an asymptote, and Bessel functions of the second kind measure that kind of behavior with the long-term behavior still being the same kind of 